This is Dr. Brenda Mondragon. I'm doing something a little differently today. Delving into an area of health that I've always wanted to investigate and I've always wanted to research since my time living up in North Dakota. I practiced there for a little while. But in my time living there, I greatly felt the impacts of a lack of vitamin D on my health. And at that time, I was looking for different ways to be able to influence my vitamin D levels. I had gotten really sick up there with strep throat and a couple different illnesses. I noticed that increasing my vitamin D levels and correcting my low levels of vitamin D completely absolved me of this. I used tanning booths up there as well as supplementation. And I never quite figured out which was it exactly that helped my vitamin D levels, whether it was the tanning booths, which are highly controversial, I, I'm aware. But when you're up in North Dakota and you're that far north, you do what you gotta do. They had excellent tanning beds there with really good bulbs. Disclaimer, before we get started, please consult with your healthcare provider before starting any kind of new healthcare. This is just for informational purposes only to explore and document what I personally went through on this very, very small little scope of health and as it pertains to my health. I'm not particularly prone to skin cancer. I don't have a history of family skin cancer. I don't have any kind of dysplastic lesions. I've always been very careful about my skin. You might think, be thinking to yourself, oh, Dr. Mondragon, what do you have to worry about? You live in Florida. You must get plenty of vitamin D. Well, <laughs> to my surprise, that might not be the case and I went and had my blood work done. If you've seen one of my previous videos, I suffer from a very common condition called melasma, which is a pigmentation or a hyperpigmentation of my skin in which I can't go out in the sun or be exposed, at least for my face, to any great levels of sun or it will just increase the pigmentation in my skin. So I have been avoiding the sun exposure to my face, like the plague, for about two years while I've been treating this condition. And in doing so, I think I may have inadvertently decreased my vitamin D levels. I don't particularly take supplements for vitamin D because I've always understood vitamin D to be sort of a hormone of sorts. I never really felt comfortable taking it. However, after researching vitamin D supplements, I think there are good brands that sell good quality vitamin D supplements. I decided to have my daughter's blood work done as well. Some of you know that Linnea films a great majority of my videos and she was willing to go and get her blood tested. I thought I would show the out-of-pocket cost here in Florida of getting my vitamin D levels checked. It is uh, quite pricey every time you get it done. The high cost was explained by the phlebotomist drawing my blood as being due to the fact that it is rarely ordered. Kind of odd seeing as important this essential vitamin is. My starting results, the date that I had it drawn was January 12th, 2023 in the morning at 9.07 a.m. My value was 20.8 nanograms per milliliter which is considered low. It says here, vitamin D deficiency has been defined by the Institute of Medicine and an endocrine society practice guideline as a level of a serum 25 OH vitamin D less than 20 nanograms per milliliter. The endocrine society went on further to define vitamin D insufficiency as a level between 21 and 29. I mean, mine is lower than that. I would just assume that it is insufficient as being lower than 21 nanograms. Anyway, so mine is, you see here, 20.8. So anything lower here, 30 nanograms is gonna be deemed as insufficient. Then we did Linnea's. She got hers tested by Quest Diagnostic, just a different lab. Both labs were about the same price. Hers was collected here, January 16th, 2023 in the afternoon hers was 20 nanograms per milliliter and you will notice between two different laboratories you're going to get different ranges as well so that's something to take note do your own research on that so we both started out pretty low 
Yeah, so even Floridians can have low vitamin D levels, <laughs> especially if we remain indoors and we don't take supplemental vitamin D. Um, you would think that um, the fortification of the foods would be enough. Apparently, for whatever we're eating, it we just ended up being low or classified as low. So I thought, well, I wanted to do an experiment over the next month, get our levels tested again. I would try a UVB sun lamp, which is a very narrow band UV lamp. I started out with three minutes per region and worked up to five minutes by the third week. You must wear goggles at all time and stay a minimum of 15 inches away from the bulbs. You can risk damaging your eyes. However, if there is any part of your skin that isn't used to getting exposed to the sun, I would be wary of sun poisoning as UVB can burn you. The sun's ultraviolet B rays interact with a protein called 7-DHC and the skin converting it into the vitamin D3, the active form of vitamin D. I didn't wear sunscreen. Sunscreen mostly works with blocking UV rays anyway. The instruction manual that came with the lamp said three to five minutes of exposure for a skin level of two slash three, like myself on the Fitzpatrick scale. So that's what I did. This vitamin D lamp by Spurdy uses bulbs with specific narrow band UVB bulbs. And it is frequently used in northern latitudes during the wintered months as a method of boosting people's vitamin D levels. Linnea was going to take a supplemental form of vitamin D every day. 21. <laughs> so you did this for how long? Like a month. It's four weeks. Yeah, month. And how much did you take? You just took one of those every day? Mm hmm It didn't go down well. This is all the stuff inside the bottle. Hashtag not sponsored. There's other stuff in here like cholic acid. 250? Micrograms. Uh. <laughs> here are the results of the lamp, of just using the lamp, minimal sun exposure, a little over a month, February 16th, 2023, 9.35 a.m. So again, I took this one in the morning, same, approximately the same time as my test before, because I heard that taking the test during different times of the day could influence the levels. Anyway, I took it at the same time in the morning. It only raised it 4.2 points here. I was a little disappointed, so I'm still low. And here is Linnea's. Her results came back at 53. Again, taken in the morning, pretty much double what mine were. Pretty shocking. Honestly, I'm a little disappointed that my vitamin D levels didn't rise more than what they did. However, I'm not surprised at the same time, but it was a lot of work doing the vitamin D lamp and you have to make sure to do it really consistently, which I did, but it just felt like a lot of work and without the most rewarding results. Vitamin D plays such a large role in our immune system, um, but really I think everybody should do their own research on it my thoughts are at this moment that the supplement pill is far easier to consume than it is to sit in front of a lamp. However, vitamin D in the blood, you can't tell the difference between what you've supplemented orally or what you've gotten from your exposure from the sun or an UVB lamp. How long will Linnea's levels remain risen? Will I maintain my levels of vitamin D longer than hers or vice versa? The verdict is still out. Now, what would I recommend everybody else to do? I really believe that's up to your healthcare provider and yourself. Not everybody is in the same boat as myself as far as their immune system, as far as their skin. You really do need to talk to your healthcare provider about it. And that also goes for supplementation of vitamin D. 
There are some risks with vitamin D, such as hypercalcemia. If you found this information in any way helpful, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and let me know in the comments below what you think. Um, have any of you gotten your vitamin D levels tested? What did you do? Did your levels go up? Did they drop? Did How did it impact your health? Let me know. Is it as expensive for you as it is for me? It's a pretty expensive test to keep doing over and over and over again and checking. So maybe that's why the data isn't there. Oh crap, that scared me. All right, that's good enough. I have both. Okay. <laughs>